Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Yay, let's warm up and get to know each other a little bit as we wait for other folks to get in this call. Uh, please check the chat so we can get to know each other better and warm up. Also, as a preparation tip, I can tell you that these sessions have been a lot of insights, a lot of nuggets. So I would highly suggest for you to get your notepad, a pen, a pencil, your notes, whatever you take your notes and make sure you have them at hand because this is going to be a lot of insights. I can assure you from the start. We have amazing speakers today and I'm sure you can learn a lot from them. On the top of my head, I can already tell you. Beautiful. So we already have some people coming in. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Some more folks joining in. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Yay, okay. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, um, let's get started. Welcome everyone to Product Week, an event designed to help you level up your PM skills and career. This event is powered by ADP List, the biggest peer-to-peer -peer learning platform in the world. If you want to learn, get mentored from the best tech talents in the world, discuss ideas and network, ADP List is the perfect match for you. We are 100% free. In this event, we're going to have a bounty. You have a chance to win an Apple Watch. For Product Week, we're giving away an Apple Watch kindly sponsored by Product Academy. All you have to do is share what you have learned from our sessions on LinkedIn and Twitter. Tag the speaker and ADP list. Details will be shared in the chat section. Now for us to run the session smoothly, a few housekeeping rules. Please keep your cameras on at all times. Please use your real name on Zoom and Lido. Presentation will quickly follow up with a 15 minute Q&A. So we'll have a 30 minute discussion and a 15 minute Q&A. For the Q&A, we are using Slido. To manage all of our questions, scan the QR code behind me or click on the link in the chat where you can ask all of your questions. Please remember to send questions with your name since anonymous questions will not be taken. You can also upload each other's questions on Slido. This session will be recorded and we will share the recording as soon as possible. For you to register to get the recording, please go over to our landing page and register over there. Now I'm going to quickly introduce our amazing panelists for today. What is your transition story into product management panel discussion? Today we have Wendy, who's Zoo. Sorry, can you correct me later on how to pronounce your name, please? Um, Wendy is uh, taking a break and has been a senior product manager at Fire and Mozilla. Uh, Toby Delamore is a GM of product at Xero. Eva Lee is a co-founder and CPO at IME Search. And Kinsley is a chief product officer at Sprout Solutions. They are all mentors in ADP List. So if you want to check them out later, you can head over to their profiles on the ADP list too. I, I am sure they have a lot to share with us today. So thank you so much for all the speakers for coming with us today. Wendy will, um, Eva will, Eva Lee will be our moderator for this session, for this panel session. Thank you so much, Eva. I'll pass it over to you now. Awesome. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. So really excited to be here. Let's get started because we only have an hour or less than an hour. So what we're going to do will be we're going around with all the panelists where we're going to be sharing a story about basically how we have the career switch. So perhaps we can, I'm just going to start with Wendy. Wendy, you want to tell us how you have your career switch, how you break into product management? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Wendy. I, and if you can hear me, you just knock your head or something. Yeah, great to meet you. Yeah. And uh, um, I, my, I think uh, my first job is actually not related to product management. 
I was a product manager, a project manager at the government association at that time. So, but at a few years of working, I find that is not like the organization I should stay there. This big organization is there a hierarchy and there, you just need to do your daily work. And I feel it's kind of boring. So at that time, I find I'm really good at like data analysis because I need to organize a lot of performance data for the government association. And I changed into the data analysis. But after that, I find um, I really lo love doing product analysis and understanding the user behavior from these numbers. But I find the problem is every time I have really good reports and or insights, or I find a really good problem about our product, but no one is listening to you. They just focus on the tests they are doing, right? I think a lot of people, I think the product manager here will understand we have our project from our maybe company go or maybe from our supervisors. So they don't have time to listen to an analyst or other like a business intelligence team's advice. So I think maybe I can try to do that. So that's the reason why I changed into my career into product management. And I actually find a lot of friends on their ADP that they may be a designers before, and they told me they have the same problem too. It's if like their product management, their product managers don't listen to them. They will try to take action. If you are this kind of person, maybe you can think about that's the way you can do or the career you are looking for. Yeah, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Wendy. Sounds like you felt like you could basically do their job while there was a gap in your team. And that's how you transitioned into product management. That was really great. Thank you. And for all the participants, if you have uh, questions, I think uh, we're going to be using Slido. So I think Slido link will be included in the chat. So let's move on to Kisley. Is it Kisley or Kisley? <laughs> Kisley, you nailed it. Yeah, Thank my you. first one's good. <laughs> so all what's right, so your story? Absolutely. So before I start, you know, can I get a quick thumbs up? Am I audible? Can you hear me clearly? Awesome. All right. So. Uh, my story, you know, my career change story actually happened when I decided to pursue an MBA. And I can actually pinpoint, you know, to, to a very specific meeting about 13 years ago when I was working as a software engineer in an IT services startup in Bangalore, India. No surprises there, huh? <laughs> One day, you know, the company's CEO invited a bunch of us for coffee. And, you know, he just posed a question that, have you ever thought about what impact the software that you're creating? has on your client, on your client's business. And I mean, I'm not exaggerating that that question just blew my mind because I had never thought of my work that way. That question really stuck with me. I had never thought about, you know, software that way before. I was just used to building products, features based on, you know, specifications that somebody gave to me. And once I finished building a product or a feature, I did not hear much about how, you know, clients were using it or what kind of an impact was it creating. And many a times, you know, the goal was just to, you know, release something that works, right? Rather than create something that creates the desired outcome. So that question, you know, sparked an interest in how a business powered by software or technology operates. I started wondering about, you know, how the company, like my company itself, you know, secured contracts, how it you know, grew the business. And eventually, you know, I came to the conclusion that since I have no business background, I would pursue an MBA. And that's what I did because I thought, you know, that would be the best way for me to learn about business in a holistic fashion. I also decided that I will learn it, do it outside my home country. So this was in India. So I stepped out. Okay, I ultimately pursued it from the Philippines at the Asian Institute of Management. And that's how I transitioned into product management. Now, there is another question later which, in which you know, I will talk a little bit more about how the transition happened because even that was not planned. I sort of stumbled into product management. So yeah, that's it for me now. Awesome, can't wait to hear more. Yes, and uh, a lot of the PMs really wanna be making an impact with the team. And that's kind of one of the biggest motivation of, of our, you know, being a PM, that's really great. How about Toby, what's your story? Hi, Ivera, and, and hi, everyone. Um, nice to see everyone, even though um, it's it's 2.30 in the morning here in Auckland, New Zealand, so um, it's it's a late night, but it's nice to be here. Um, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, I think, because everyone in product that I talk to comes from so many different backgrounds and has so many sort of um, interesting stories for their career changes. So um, I'm a GM of product at the moment at Zero, so I, I get to lead um, a fantastic team of sort of group product managers and a, a product team of around 20 people. But before I got to that, you know, I, I started my career in customer support. And I was lucky to work in a, a technology company here in New Zealand that's sort of a, an e-commerce um, website. And, you know, my, my career transition really happened because I started to get involved in solving problems. And in customer support, you know, I was lucky enough to start working with some of our engineers to sort of say, hey, we have these, these problems our customers are calling about. You know, how can we solve those? Um, and that led me into that place of kind of starting to, I think, as you touched on Kisley, which is, you know, actually, I enjoy solving these problems and I can see how software can solve problems at scale. How could I help understand and lead that more? And that led me into learning about product management um, as a role and then starting to um, investigate how I could start to step into that type of role, as you said, Eva, to really create more impact. Um, and so that's how I went about starting to put my hand up and, and do product management before I even had the product management role. And I think that's a really important part about transitioning, which I think we'll talk about. Um, so yeah, so my, my career change really came from a customer support um, role, which I think has always given me really good empathy. You know, when you're on a phone with a customer, um, that's a really great place to build foundations for product management and the customer empathy that you need to be uh, very good at it. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing, Toby. Yeah, it's really good to see we're all coming from different backgrounds and kind of transitioning to PM. Being someone in the CS team, you probably have, I guess, firsthand empathy with the customers. So it sounds like a natural transition. So I guess that's my turn. Uh, so my name's Eva. I actually started out as a UX designer. So as a UX designer, I also had the privilege to interact with customers a lot. Uh, but at that time, I was really craving for more as I was kind of stuck in the solutioning space because that was what UX designers used to do, where we are most, mostly investing our time in talking to customers, crafting the wireframes, prototyping, testing, repeat, maybe working with the developers. But I was really curious about the bigger picture as like, oh, there's so many business problems and user problems. Why exactly we're picking one over the other? And that was... Uh, something that my PM at that time wasn't able to give clarity on. And that was when I kind of naturally also uh, tried to gravitate into more the PM responsibility. Like Toby, I didn't know I was doing more the PM work, but I was really wanting to know why, what, what can I do to make the biggest impact for my users? So that's kind of how I naturally got interested into product management. And later on, I transitioned into a product owner role first, and then into an actual product manager role. <laughs> um, well, thank you everyone for sharing uh, your story. So the, for the next series of questions, we can maybe just keep it casual. So if you wanna respond first, you can put your hands up with the emoji. So the next question is, so we talked about how we had the career change. So what exactly uh, did all the panelists do to, to basically secure the job to make that transition? Anybody wanna go first? Oh, okay, Toby, yes. Yeah, let's get into it. We've only got a little bit of time, so many good things to talk about. Um, yeah, I think I'm always passionate about telling people about this because I think it's a very hard thing to understand when you're looking to get into product management. Um, you know, how, how do I tr make that transition? So for me, it was sort of, once I learned about the role that we touched on and kind of realized, okay, I, I think I would like to do this. One of the things I think that is is really important is making your intent clear. Um, so being really deliberate to go in your company or if, if you want to get into a company, finding people and going and saying, hey, I would like to do this. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for showing motivation and interest in a role that helps people start supporting you to get into that role. And so making that intent clear um, is the first thing. And the second is really looking for those opportunities to 
build that experience or those stories that talk to product management. So you don't need to be in a product management role to be doing what is the product management skill set. Um, and so for me personally, that was things like in our hackathons, um, when I worked at the first company where I was in customer support, I would always put my hand up for an idea. I would always lead an idea. I would you know, work with engineers and designers to come up with that idea and, and present it back. And that was product management. I just wasn't in the role. Now, what that helped me do and things like the first interviews I did was actually talk to examples where I had done things like define customer problems or worked closely with engineers to work out how we could build something. Um, and so I think those are two really important things you can you can start to look at if you're looking to get into product management and is what, what I did, which is make your intent clear, understand the role and then find opportunities to practice those core skill sets in the role. No, that was really great. I think, Toby, you just shared the killer formula right on the spot. That's also exactly how I landed my, I guess, first PO position. I made myself really clear in the whole company. I was so, I'm, I was, I'm very interested in the moving into PM position, even though there was no opening. And then I asked my PM to basically to see if there are any um, tasks or duties that I could help him with. So at that time, I actually helped him was I was helping him writing uh, Jira tickets, even though I was a UX designer, that's nothing really to do with me. Um, you know, just basically find opportunities that you can get experience. And it's a hundred percent true where you may not have the PM title, but I'm very, very confident that a lot of us actually have, you know, stumble into PM responsibilities without having the actual title. How about uh, Wendy and uh, Kisley, anything else you want to add before we move on to the next question? Wendy, yes, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I, yeah, for me, I think a little bit different is I'm trying to tag into a lot of PM work at the beginning, and I actually doing a lot of PM's work in my in one of my previous team, but I find the company is not you know taking it seriously. They think, oh, I just I just loving doing a lot of work. I just like trying to do different things. And if and after that, I think you need to talk to your managers. If they don't have that kind of plan on you, they want a better business intelligence team. That they don't want you to be a product manager. They think you are doing really good at your current job. They don't want to transit you. You need to take action. For me, I think because I have data background, so my role will be that related to growth product manager. That will be easier for you to tap into um, the different area. So I applied for the growth product manager at Mozilla at that time, but it's really interesting. The first week I joined the team, they tell me they are going to have a new version. So they want me to be a normal product manager. I actually don't know what it re is, it is what is that mean? I, what is means normal product manager, not growth product manager. Their task size will be a whole new feature or maybe a whole new version. And I, I'm kind of surprised they asked me to do that. And I find there because they only have two product manager at, at that time. So they, uh, they let me to do the normal product manager job. And uh, because I already quit my job, I have no choice. Then I started to learning how can I be a product manager, the gross product manager is usually taking care of really small tasks maybe like the flow or maybe like optimization so some conversion numbers. But yeah, that's my story. I just take it and I take the challenge and I, I think I'm doing okay right now. So I'm here, can be a normal product manager. Yeah, yeah. so you just take the challenge and do. you ask your colleague to help, then everything will be fine. Yeah, that's, what, <laughs> yeah. that's my story and uh, yeah. That, that's a great story. Uh, one of the great qualities of a PM is that we have often we have very little information or we haven't done something before, but you were able to figure out and made an informed decision with the little data you have. Uh, Kisley, do you have anything else to add before we move on? Yeah, so uh, I had zero intention or idea of getting into product management. So guys, I told you that, you know, like my career chain started with the decision to, you know, get an MBA, right? And, I was actually quite confused, unfortunately. 
after the mba i was like i like marketing i like finance i like this i like everything what do i do where do i go and i was not getting a job so you know like this opportunity came along where i was offered the role of a project development manager and i was like what the hell i'll just take it okay and then you know these projects were basically ideas you know to solve certain problems so the co- the founder of the company had certain ideas to solve certain problems and essentially each of these projects were products and that's how you know i ended up becoming a product manager i started doing these things so i basically married my knowledge of you know a software engineer and what i had learned in business school and of course tried to figure other things out and then eventually i realized that you know what i'm actually playing the role of a product manager so by the time i ended that stint i had realized you know that now i am a pm and there was a brief period you know where i actually considered going back to being a software engineer because the definition of done when you are a pm is not that clear cut like you know if you are an engineer you are given a ticket you write the code you push it to production done right it's harder to get that feeling of satisfaction as a pm but but i realized you know that like it it really suited me it married all my interests and i enjoyed being at the intersection of technology business and users and i also realized you know that i'm a little businessy so i stuck with it and you know no regrets <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. Joking aside, uh, PM's work is never done, but that's also why we have the definition of done for us to move forward. Um, that that's yeah. really great. Uh, thanks for sharing. So we're gonna move on to the next question. Maybe I'm gonna combine a couple questions together just because we have time constraint. So uh, some of the common challenges that I've heard from mentees who want to break into product is that they don't have the direct product management experience they may not have the direct title um and also it's pretty difficult to you know get promoted internally cuz there's just not that many opening so for all the mentors here what uh what challenges did you experience and basically how did you overcome them anybody want to give it a go mm, or we might need to think about this one first <laughs> I, I could give well, it a go. Uh, oh, all yeah. right, go ahead. Go ahead, Eva. Okay, I'll go first at this time. So at that time, it took me about six months to make that transition. At the beginning, I thought, oh, I've been in tech for a long time, I've been doing UX designer, collaborating with TPM on a daily basis. This should be a piece of cake, but that was not the case. It took me about six months. Uh, during that time, I basically was doing side projects. You know, uh, trying to be a PO. Uh, for my side projects, be building an iOS app, actually working with developers, you know, crafting requirements to get those experience. Again, internally, I asked my PM if I could do some of his work, uh, but essentially, it was extremely difficult to then uh, to land a PM position outside of my company because most of them, ninety nine percent of them, like, oh, you don't have PM experience, you know, goodbye. So. That's when I kind of utilized Toby's tactic. I made made it really really clear internally that I'm really interested in moving into product management. So depending on your your situation, you might be like Wendy, where you just get it because people, uh, you know, you have skill sets that other PMs team are looking for, or you might be like myself, who just uh, basically need to make your intent really clear and then uh, gain those experience by basically. Uh, letting the the company know that you want to move into that position, and in is eventually if they believe in you, if you've demonstrated enough, you know, capability, you eventually will be able to get there. And for my case, after six months, I got promoted uh, into a pro, uh, product owner role, and then later on, it, it will be much much easier since you're already in the PM type of space. So that's kind of my story. Uh, how about Kisle? You mentioned you were saying something <laughs> before I cut you off. Ah, uh, no, no, you didn't actually. And thank you for sharing that. Right. So, uh, so the challenges of breaking into product and how to break into product. Right. So, like, as like you know, my experience was you know I sort of stumbled into it. So I was lucky that way. Right. But uh, I, like I would try to answer this question, you know, in a couple of different ways. So first is you know your background, right. that given that product management essentially is at the intersection you know must have seen everybody must have seen this Venn diagram right business technology users right so if you are connected to any one of these circles right like i mean i was connected to the technology part right toby was doing you know customer support right i think uh, eva you were doing design right 
healthcare, which again, you know, sort of like already is there, right? You know, you already designed part and Wendy was into data, right? Okay. So somebody like, you know, the, these are all the, you know, good connection points, you know, to what product management is really about, right? So if you're any of, if you're connecting, connected to any of these circles, you know, at least you have one step there, right? Okay. Now with regards to the other two steps, that's where, I, well, since I, you know, like they didn't do it that way, but I have seen others do it, you know, and I have given opportunities to people who have done it that way. My advice there is, you know, that really study, you know, like books, videos, short courses, like following product leaders, you know, trying to be an armchair PM. So I coined this term and I think, you know, I, I, I coined it, sorry, I'm taking a little credit there, but be an armchair PM, like look for a product or a couple of products that you really like, software products, and then study them over time, study the revolution over time. Use a journal to document, you know, how features are being added, send feature requests, you know, to the companies, try to identify, you know, what other features, you know, would you add, you know, if you were the PM, things like that, right? And ultimately at the, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, if you can't get a move into product management laterally within your organization, the best bet is really, you know, some kind of entry level position, right? Where you can really demonstrate, you know, that you have what it takes. I mean, I have personally given opportunities to two people in my team, you know, who came from a non-PM background, but they really proved to me in the interview that they knew everything about my product. They showed me, you know, that they could really, you know, attempt a case study like a PM could. So those things impressed me and I, and I gave them the opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because we all have to start from somewhere. So by demonstrating you have transferable skills that you can do the job is definitely a great piece of advice. How about Wendy and Toby, anything else you want to add? Yeah, go ahead, Toby. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great advice and, and there's a lot of that that is very important. You know, I think with breaking into product management, the first thing that I would acknowledge or, or really share with everyone here, right, is it's hard. And if you're finding it hard, that's okay. It, it's always hard. Um, so don't be disheartened, you know, by the fact that if you do an interview and it doesn't work out that you're not suited for product management, it's just that product management is hard. It's, it's quite a varied um, role. And so every role can be quite different in terms of what a company looks for. The good thing is anyone can do product management. Um, and so it's just about finding that opportunity and those steps to get into it. And I think, um, Kitsley and Eva, you've, you've touched on some really good things. And the, and the other thing I'd add to that is the importance of people and relationships towards moving into product management. Um, and so a lot of um, advice I give to, to mentors and things like that is don't rely on kind of the classic cold apply with your CV to a job and hope you get an interview. Um, but seek ways to connect in with people who work in product management or hire product people and really talk with them about what are they looking for? If they're in your company, you can really sit down and have a coffee and learn from them, maybe even ask them to mentor you. And again, that shows that you're interested and they get to know you and they can take more of um, a, a, an ability to trust you into a role. Um, and it's a lot, so when I hire product people, it's a lot easier to hire someone with no experience if I know who they are and I know that they have the traits like curiosity, problem solving, that I can coach into really good product people. Um, but on a CV, I can only judge on what's on the CV. So that relationship is really, really important. So if you can build that with a few key connections where you want to have a role, that can be, be really important. Um, and then the only other thing I'd add to that is learn about the principles and the why behind product management. Um, a mistake I see people make a lot of the times is they think product management is cool. It's a popular thing. Maybe I should get into it. Maybe it'll be fun. Well, you need to be able to explain to me why you want to do product management. Why is that a role that's important? Um, if you don't understand those principles, then you're already missing the point of, of being a product manager. So understand the purpose of product management before you even start interviewing for it. Um, so those are two things I'd add to that. Yeah, those are really, really good points. Just kind of adding on top of that, I, I see some people or other um, you know, team members in my team think, oh, PM, you call the shot, that must be pretty fun. 
Um, not really. We don't call the shot. You know, we gather input from our stakeholders and we have to listen to tons of feedback. And then from there, then we try to make an informed decision. We don't call, like we don't call the shot just because, oh, I want to do this. Uh, it's basically a different experience. So, yeah, making sure you, you do your research, what PMs do, you know, the whys behind it is really good. And I also want to kind of slot in another piece of advice since Toby touched on building relationships. Um, I participated in a tons of men, men, uh, mentorship program when I just started. That's why I also want to give back to the community. And tons of mentors at that time were really open to actually give me a referral uh, at that time to their company. So really start you know, putting yourself out there, getting to know others, and also let others know what you can do and what your passion is. It's really, really important. Uh, how about Wendy? Do you have anything else you want to add? Yeah, and I, there's one thing I think is really practical. It's not just talking to a product manager. You also need, if you are a product manager, you need to talk to everyone, right? So I think the best practice for you now is even you are an engineer or you are a designer or which role you are, you just need to talk to different things people. You need to understand what everyone's doing. Because for me, I think the most important things after a few years of work is not about doing the task or the planning. It is about the communication. If you don't communicate with your team, you don't get the information and you don't know how much resource you have and what's their, um, what's their, what's other things planning and how can you align with our company goal or other things go. You need to do all these things. So I think it's really important. You need to practice to talk to people. Don't eat lunch alone or at least to try to talk maybe three or five people a day because I know everyone is busy. Like my engineers, every time they see me, they just want to walk away. They don't want to talk to me. They think I am there to tell them something, some bad news or something. But if you want to be a product manager, you need to try to communicate with anyone. You need to try to understand what everyone is talking about. Or maybe even your CEO, sometimes I know we, we actually don't get what they are looking for or what they are talking about, but you need to try to talk to them. Because after a few years of working, you will know it's very important to communicate with those stakeholders. And they are the most difficult part for me right now, I think, yeah, it's usually hard for us to try to find a balance for the resource and the stakeholders. So I think it's really good practice for you to every day is to talk to someone. Anyone in your company is very important to you. Yeah, if you are a product manager. Yeah, thank That's you, Wendy. Yeah. I think thank you. That was a yeah. very, very important point that everybody should remember. We should uh, continue networking getting to know and you know each other and also build that relationship and very funny Elsa said all the introverts are shaking because we hate we hate sharing lunch with others when we don't need to but that's part of the job and that's why Toby's advice we really figure out the why why do you want to do this job do you still want to do this job even though those you know some of the tasks include getting to know each other have coffee or you know just with your members with your within your team um that's really great let's see how much time i think we have a few more minutes before we move on to q a so the but the very last thing is how do we stand out if we don't have you know a lot of pm experience well, i mean i can start all right i think toby wants to start go ahead toby All right, we'll do a quick one too. Um, yeah, I think standing out with PM experience, you know, I touched on it at the beginning, right, is kind of something that everyone feels like it's a little bit of a dichotomy of, well, to get PM experience, I need to be a PM, but to be a PM, I need to have PM experience. So, you know, where do I even start? Um, and so a lot of the time, my advice to people is identify what you're already doing that is actually a PM skill set. And, and a lot of people will be, right? If you're working in engineering or design or customer support, you're actually doing elements of, of product management, which you touched on, Kirsty, right? The kind of customer business technology sectors that you know kind of interlap for product management. 
So identifying those, but have been able to look at them in a lens of the product management roles. That's why I say understand the principles of product management will help you say, well, I work in customer support, but what I do is I talk with customers, I build empathy, I understand their problems, and I bring those to our engineers and we work through what could be a solution. That could be a product management talking, but it's actually me and my customer support role. So that's one. Um, and then I think the the way to stand out is find those opportunities to do things outside your role as well. So again, it's those startup weekends you can go to and join a group and build a product. It's building something for yourself. Um, there's so many tools now that you can allow you to do those things. If you have a passion or a hobby, you can get out there and build something and, and that starts to um, build your experience. So I built um, Colab, my, my startup I founded, you know, and I built it off the back of a single blog post and a Notion website. Um, no engineers, you know, just, just kind of building something. And that's, again, product management. So build those things up and that gives you your kind of toolkit to be able to go into interviews, into talking with people to, to break into product management with examples and stories that you can share. Um, and that's really important to do that versus just turning up and saying, oh, I don't have experience, but I would like experience um, because you can get it without even stepping into the role. Absolutely. Thank you, Toby. How about Kisley? You have any other nuggets to share? Well, I mean, Toby nailed it already. So I would just like to add a few things. Out. So first, you know, before we actually start talking about how to become a PM, right? I'll go back to the point, you know, that Toby made a while back, right? That, you know, like, being curious and being good at problem solving, right? Under that, I will add communication. I would say that before we even embark in, on this journey, right? Do a gut check. Are you curious? Are you a good problem solver? And, you know, do, are you decent at communicating, right? I think, you know, if, if, if you fail at this gut check, you know, then maybe, you know, look for ways to strengthen these things, right? Okay, and then take the next step. Then secondly, you know, if you don't have PM experience, and let's say, you know, this is brought up in an interview, right? I would challenge the interviewer in a polite way that great PMs do not necessarily, you know, have to have, you know, PM experience from day one, right? I personally believe that, you know, great PMs actually come from diverse backgrounds. You should have started off as an engineer or a designer or customer support or sales, right? And then you actually veer into product management, right? So your skill set, right? Your experience is actually very valuable and someday you will be a great PM, right? And then how do you do it? I think Toby explained it very well, right? You know, that you really have to start already, right? You have to show your intention that I give a damn. That's why I've been doing this on my own, right? And there are so many ways to prove that point nowadays, right? And lastly, you know, if you ever get, you know, an interview opportunity, if you, then should it be that hard because the number of PM roles, I believe are increasing, research the heck out of it. Like the, the company, the role, the product, look at com the competitors, like do your homework. Right? If you have one shot, you really need to make it count, right? So yeah, so basically that's what I have to share. Yeah, thank you. Those are really good points to um, kind of echoing on top of that. Uh, this is more for job search uh, purposes. Something you should also, you could do is, you know, trying to find transferable skill and your domain expertise that a company is looking for. Because a PM, responsibility the type of pm the hiring manager are looking for could be very very different from team to team from company to company so try to find your strength for you know for basically it's a it's kind of a dating or matching process right they try to find the talent for their team do you have the skill set so for someone like toby who has a lot of cs experience it might be a really good fit for cs software just an example as for you know wendy who has a huge data analytics background I can see a perfect fit, you know, as she being a PM for those companies as well. So trying to find those transferable skill and how you can craft those narratives will be pretty important as well. So I think we're almost out of, run, out of time. Wendy, do you have one last advice for our audience before we move on to q and yeah. I, yeah, I have a, one is actually a really easy one is you just check the linking to find your dream job, but don't don't you know? Don't 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 think about maybe senior product manager. You just try to find maybe associate or the normal product manager's role and try to understand what they are they need to do, 
And another thing I will share a book, I think you need to know like their level of the product management and which kind of skill set you need to have in different kinds of level. That will be very important. Then you can go back to your resume to analyze like which, what the skill set I have for now. From, um, and I compare my skill set to their product management um, skill sets and what's the things I need to enhance or I need to learn more about it and how can I learn it? I can go to Coursera or any resources. You need to keep yourself on track. You are, Actually, you are a project or a product. So you need to build by yourself. You need to build your own roadmap. So I was sure, I think everyone, I think a lot of people here read the book about Jaggi's um, cracking the PM interview. But actually, she has another one is the PN career. It's like a dictionary for me. If I want to be a product leader, which kind of skill set I need to have. So I will share it later. Yeah. Okay. Eva, back to you. I think we don't have enough time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, we could know that's really great. You know, build a roadmap for yourself. I got to do that. We should all do that and kind of check in. Are we still on the right track heading towards the right goal? Okay. I think we're at time with all the discussion. So I will flip it back to Helen. Yes, thank you everyone. I think I can speak for the audience. A lot of nuggets here, a lot of insights. So the first question for Q&A is from Temi and they ask, how do you tackle imposter syndrome at the earlier stage of your career or even now? Who would like to take that? Who would like to go first? Yeah, I can, uh, I can, <laughs> I can share my experiences. I think it's pretty common to to have imposter syndrome at any stage of your career. Uh, but if we talk about earlier stage, what I would do, what I would advise people is to you know, is find a good mentor and also find, uh, you know, peers that could support you. Basically, they are someone who may be able to provide you more objective advice. Something if you think you might be doing poorly they may have different perspective. And also from that, you can basically, uh, you know, figure out your roadmap on how you can tackle your weaknesses. And maybe they are able to identify strengths that you, you don't know about. And that's exactly the case for myself. Because a lot of times you, you just kind of focus on work, you know, you're not getting uh, feedback, advice, you know, it's hard to know where you're at. So what I would recommend is find a good mentor, you know, so that they, they, they can provide feedback in terms of where you're at, also find good support system through your peers. Perfect, thank you so much. I think next is Toby, as I see on my screen. So Toby, please. Yeah, thank you. And I, I just wanted to dive on this one because it's something that I'm relatively passionate about trying to stamp out um, because I think it's a, imposter syndrome can be a nasty thing that, that brings a lot of people down who are very talented. Um, and Eva touched on it, it's sort of exactly what I was going to um, talk to around that support network. So the more you can talk with peers, you know, other people who are starting their product management career in that early stage, um, the more you're going to find out that actually you're, you're all facing the same challenges and actually that it's not just you, you're not alone in those challenges. So I, I would definitely second that. Um, it's a, it's a really funny, I think, reflection in product management where we talk a lot about iterate and and start with something and then build on it, um, but we expect sort of perfection from ourselves. So the other thing I would say is take that mentality that it's, it's always a learning role and in product management, you, you should be comfortable with that, be comfortable with that you're always learning and you're never the expert, you're in fact the facilitator of brilliant people who are experts and and it's never your job to know all the answers it's just your role to help bring those things together and, and kind of bring about the best um, out of a team so yeah build that support network and always understand that there is learning to be done so it's okay if you're learning every day perfect thank you so much toby i see next in my screen kisley yeah, so I mean, uh, I think Toby and Eva have covered it pretty well. I would just like to add, like, very generally speaking, is there anything ever, you know, that you know already from birth? Everything has to be learned, right? Yeah. So I, I think that's the first question, you know, to answer that. Like, I, I was a fake software engineer until I learned it, right? 
I was a fake MBA student until I put in the work. And I was a fake product manager until I started learning it. Right. So my advice is, you know, if somebody is challenging you in a way that's making you question your own beliefs, right? You know, like reach out to the people, you know, like this is something that, you know, Toby also mentioned, right? You know, that look, look for the support network. It could be mentors or it could be people in the company who believe in you, right? And also try to make a list of you know, the things that you have done well. If you're getting the feeling of imposter syndrome, it can't be that you're doing everything wrong, right? It must be one or two things, right? Like, let's say, you know, you are not good at writing tickets as a PM. That's something very specific, right? And that can be learned, right? You find the right people to help you with, right? And then you will feel less of an imposter about it. So, you know, everything can be learned and you will be able to do it. Thank you. I think that's very encouraging for a lot of people here. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, now let's go to the next question um, from Felipe Braga. He says, uh, how to successful, how to be successful in a product manager interview? Who would like to take it first? Wendy, go ahead, please. I think the you will on internet. But another thing I want to mention is just be who you are. Is you know, it, 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 you need to show which kind of personality you are and which kinds of um, culture you can be getting into. Because I think company culture are important. It's not just like answering a question. You also need to, it, it's not just you need to fit in their culture. You need to find the right culture for you and then you can grow and uh, work with the team there. You cannot find the right culture, you cannot feel you like it will be very difficult for you. So just remember, it's not the interview for just for you. It's also company. You you doing this and you need to go and uh, the method is not like I you need to do this right, but it's not fit in your really difficult environment that will be difficult for you and your company too. So just remember, you also need to think about is this the right place for me or not? Yeah, not just answering those questions. What I think, yeah. Okay, maybe. Beautiful. Eve, I think maybe Eva also wants to answer a question, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I absolutely agree with Wendy, you know, bringing your personality, being who you are, being authentic is super important, but on more, I guess, the tactical side, I guess the basic is that you should do in-depth in research about the company, you should be able to showcase that you understand their business model and also, you know, the gaps in their product pretty well. So some opportunity is by asking high quality questions toward the, towards the end of the interview. So that you almost feels like you're part of the team. You understand, you know, you may not get it right, but uh, part of our job is also keep asking questions, right? And then the second piece is uh, understanding the PM interview process. There are tons of uh, YouTube videos, questions that you can practice on. But what, what I would say is, you know, you can practice all those questions, but I think what's important is, you know, preparing your stories to basically share, um, how should I say, picture, help them to visualize how, how it, what it is like to work with you. And the second piece is, I lost my train of thought. What was that? Uh, maybe you come back to me, but I'm gonna share a link to a book called Deco and Conquer. So it has tons of PM questions, but I think the key thing is that you don't have to memorize all the questions, be true to who you are and always, always, oh, it comes back, always highlight your assumptions because we want to learn about your thought process. How did you arrive to that destination? Because all those questions, you know, on-site challenges isn't to get the perfect answer from you, but we want to know how you get there. Beautiful, thank you so much, everyone. Anyone else had anything to add? No, okay, I'm gonna to go to the next one. Oh, sorry, did anyone, Toby, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to add, uh, you know, look, I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to to interview a lot of product people. Um, and I just kind of want to shout out that, you know, we don't do all 
interviews like fang companies um and, and things like that it's not a 15 round interview with completely in-depth questions about how you would um, work out the number of piano tuners in the US or things like that. So um, yeah, just wanna you know make sure people know that that isn't the only way interviews are run and to Eva and Kisley's point, it's about preparing your stories, showing your experience in terms of how you've done particular product management skill sets and being authentic to who you are. Don't, don't come in and try and just rattle off a practice answer that you've done 10 times speak from your experience speak to who you are and and that goes a really long way to giving trust that if someone brings you into their team they know what they're getting versus a, a polished interview um, performance perfect thank you so much for adding toby uh, i just wanted to do a quick note before we go to the next question and there is a question in my screen right now that has anonymous so i would like to ask that person to please go and put their names in there um, so next question is from Shardul. I hope I pronounced that correctly. How to transition from my first PM role to a growth PM role? Who would like to take that first? Yeah, I think that's the question for me, right? Because only I was, okay, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe please, yeah, cool. Kisley can answer to me. No, yeah. it's okay, Wendy, go ahead, after you. No, yeah, sorry, okay. I think you need to understand the what's the growth PM different to the normal PM. It's very important. It's about the, the data skill set, uh, which means you need to use all the data and understand all the data by yourself. That's very important because most of companies, if, if they hire the growth PM, they don't have a resource to, for you to hire another, another uh, analyst for you. So you need to think you need to tackle everything by yourself. So you need to be familiar with all the tools like Amplitude, GA, or like this is kind of anal analyzing tools or also the SQL at the same time. And you also need to use the data to tell the, telling the story, like their visualization is also very important. So actually the most important part is about the data skills. So you need to try to figure out which company need which kinds of things. And there for me, when I'm doing the growth PM, there is a very important book is called Lean Analytics. That is, they have all kinds of business model in that book. And it can help you to have a very clear framework to tackle into different kinds of questions, like which kinds of flow you're analyzing and there, you need to understand these things clearly. So for me, I think growth PM is more, they have more strengths on their uh, data science. But also at the same time, you need to know how to do the tasks. Like you need to plan or you need to tell the company how to optimize some parts of the features or what's their direction our uh, product need to go. Sometimes maybe, sometimes bigger questions, but sometimes it's like small questions. Yeah, so you need to have better data skill. I think I can share some resources later. Yeah, that's all from me, yeah. Yeah, it's your turn. So, Wendy, you know, gave a very good answer, you know, on like how to be a growth PM from the technical aspect of it, right? You know, like spot on, right? So, what I would like to add to that, you know, is that apart from that, I would strongly advise, you know, that if your goal is to grow the product, okay, now, depending upon the context, you know, maybe growth for you means just increasing the number of users, increasing usage, maybe revenue, you know, is, is something that you're looking at, right? Whatever it is, you know, Please make sure, you know, that you're also interacting with people, you know, who deal with customers, right? Like, okay, for example, if you're doing a B2B product, you know, make sure you talk to the teams who are actually doing customer support, account management, you know, selling it, right? And get feedback from them, you know, on how is your product actually faring in the market, right? Like there is data. And then also, you know, make sure, you know, that you, you talk to people who are either using it or selling it or interacting with people who are using it. That would also help you a lot, you know, in figuring out, like maybe coming up with some hypotheses around why something is not working, right? And the data will help you validate that. Yeah, that's it for me. Did anyone else have anything else to add before we move on to the next question? Okay, let's get it going. Next question is from David, and they ask, how can we shine in a PM internship role? 
to get a to get a conversion. Who would like to take that? Okay, Kisley, Toby, Toby. So who would I like think to go first? This is a little bit. Would you like to go, Wendy? No, it's fine. I think Toby and the kids like can his um. Yeah. Toby, you can you can start. All right, that's good. We worked that one out. Good work, team. We're getting good at kind of getting that going. Yeah, look, I, you know, PM internships. How can you shine? Um, how can you shine? Trying to get into product, all relatively the same, I would say, in terms of what I personally look for and um, give people advice on, which is, again, you know, look at ways you can drive impact, take ownership of things, put your hand up to, to do things. Um, you know, usually within a company, there's so much to be done. There's always opportunities to take on things or, or tackle problems. So be proactive um, and, and kind of be clear that you're happy to step in and help with different things um so i think you know in terms of doing that don't don't just take on everything and then not be able to do anything but identify a couple of you know opportunities that you'd like to contribute to or take ownership for and then work really hard to deliver those outcomes and showcase how you've you've got to those outcomes you know talk about what you've had as as the ability um, to make impact versus just I finished and had an output. Um, and then the other is display those, those traits that make strong product managers that we touched on, right? Show your curiosity for the business, learn about it, um, show that you can solve problems, work closely with team members. Um, and that's probably the final point, which is don't try and be an individual and shine, you know, don't push others down just so you can get above good PMs are strong collaborators. So showcase that you can work within the team, that you can empower other people and bring them on that journey as well. That's it for me. Beautiful, I think, Nick. Thank you, beautiful. Now I think Kisley, maybe then Wendy. So, yeah, so Toby has pretty much covered it, right? So what I would like to add, you know, I'd just like to add to that. that uh, sometime back, actually, Toby, you were the one who mentioned, you know, that networking, right? You know, you need to talk to people, right? So if you are an intern in a company, right, make sure, you know, you have lunches with different teams, talk to different people. Don't just be in a rush to go home, you know, when the time is up, right? Come early, try to hang out with different kinds of people, stay late, try to hang out with different kinds of people, right? Try to get us, and this will help you get a sense of the culture of the company, the different kinds of people who are there, you will get to learn from them, right? And this will really also help you come to the conclusion that do I want to work for this company, right? And uh, apart from that, uh, again, you know, going back to, you know, being proactive, right? That, you know, there is this joke that, you know, the intern is supposed to bring the coffee, right? Okay. So, well, it's a metaphor for me, right? You know, bring the coffee in the sense, you know, that look for opportunities for doing grunt work that somebody doesn't want to do, right? Maybe, you know, let's say the person you're reporting to as an intern or the team in general has like a mound, a pile of data that they want to go through. Maybe do it for them, right? Maybe it's a pile of data in an Excel sheet, right? Maybe you say that, you know what, let me have a look at it, right? Things like that. Okay, there is always something, you know, there's always a little piece, something that it's tedious, it's boring, nobody wants to do, right? So you can take up, take up those things, do it in a great way and show them, you know, that, you know, you are there to deliver value, whatever way you can. And that would really, you know, like increase your odds of converting that into a, a role. That's it for me. Beautiful, thank you. I think Wendy, did you have anything else to add? Oh, Eva. Uh -huh. Yeah. When did then Eva? Okay, I, could I add? Okay. Okay. Um, that's only one thing I want to add is, don't forget to talk to your manager or who have the power to decide these things. It's, it's, it's really important to know they have this kinds of intention or not, or you are just wasting your time here. Maybe you need to move to other kinds of company. They just want to want someone to take this role for three months. So just ask the manager, don't be afraid that it's not lewd or it's 
not appropriate. You're just talking about your future with him. So every company is very important to value your future as their future too. So you need to know your goal is aligned and then you, you can know, oh, I can do more. I can try to do more. Maybe this is the things I can do before I onboard on the real job. Yeah, that's the, that's all from me. Yeah, Eva. Yeah, just kind of echoing on top of what everyone has said. Um, try to just go find a problem and solve it, you know, make it kind of create that opportunity for yourself. I've seen cases where there was no opening. There was, you know, they did not budget that headcount, but someone created an opportunity for themselves by identifying a problem and show that they're uh, in, the, in the process of solving that problem. Then naturally the company will, you know, you know create that opening that's not you know uncommon so that's also one way to to get that conversion or um, essentially break into pm from other uh, position within your company beautiful thank you so much everyone i think that was it did anyone else have anything no okay good so our last question for the day comes from yosika Again, apologize if I pronounce your name wrong in any way. Um, they ask, could you please describe your day to day like, a, like as a PM? Bad days and good days included. I am not a PM yet and I am considering whether this is for me. Who would like to go first? Oh, I did not put my hands down. I can go first. I'll be quick. Okay. Uh, I'll start with bad days. Obviously, bad days could be uh, an unproductive day. Maybe you have back-to-back -back meetings. Uh, sometimes meetings are not very efficient. Other types of bad days, you're having conflicts or actually it's kind of like every day. Every day, there's different kind of fire uh, that you cannot anticipate, even though your day-to-day -day looks about the same. You have daily stand-up. You look at your backlog, you talk to different stakeholders, you may have design meetings, working with your designers. Uh, but I think a good day is essentially you ship your product and then you, you're you tracking the data, you see your customers are happy with it, or you know you're getting more hints and clues on how to improve it. I think that those are good days. Bad days are the days that you're stuck with meetings and you don't feel like you're being productive for me. Beautiful, thank you. Who would like to go next? Anyone would like to add? Wendy, please, yes. Okay, uh, I can share my good day is um, I usually go to office really early. I, I My favorite part of the day is in the morning. No one is in the office and I check their product data every morning for maybe one or two hours. Then I will have a daily stand up and at daily stand up, I will have one highlight about today's product numbers. If there is something really interesting, I will share with something. Yeah, but every morning is like this, but the terrible part is in the afternoon. I have all my meeting in the afternoon and because I am like the product owner, so I decide when to have which kinds of meeting. So I will squeeze all my meeting in one day. And that is always the last productive days. You need to talk to your supervisors and tell them how everything's going and sometimes they are not, you feel they are not listening you feel really frustrated they are dealing with something else they think it's important maybe investor or something else but they just not listening to you even they sit there you can feel that is really terrible but sometimes i have the team by weekly team meeting with my teacher we were this week one where contribute or they were asking is the moment I feel I'm doing something because for a product manager, you always feel you are actually not doing anything, right? You just sit there and have meetings and writing the task, but actually you are not doing the coding, you are not doing the data. So you feel nothing you nothing is from you. You feel you're just there and there, yeah. And it's doing nothing every day sometimes. Yeah. But after at that kind of meeting will make me feel really productive and they're satisfied with my team members. I know we are in some right direction. Yeah, that's my day. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Kisley, please. Yes, go ahead. So I would not like to, you know, talk about a good day. 
I really want to highlight the bad day because the question is about, you know, you want to become a PM and you're considering whether this is for you, right? So let me tell you about a bad day. And bear in mind you know, that like I am in a leadership position, you know, so your day will not necessarily exactly mirror my bad day, but some of the elements might be common. Right? So a bad day for me is when I deal with B2B products, right? So I have a limited number of customers and they actually have access to me or to my team, right? So a bad day is, you know, when customer or customers start badgering me for feature requests that are not aligned with my product's roadmap, that are very specific to their use case. And they, they use, you know, the size of their account or their you know, influence or the tenure, you know, to basically say that, oh, if you're not going to give it this verse, you know, we are going to leave. Yeah. And to add to this interesting mix, you know, imagine that something breaks down in production and impacts, you know, certain number of clients. To add to this interesting mix, mix, imagine, you know, that like a feature release that you were planning on fails at the last minute because some issue crops up, some dependency that was not, you know, planned for or accounted for suddenly is now, you know, slowing things down, right? So, and then, you know, you have pressure from internal and external stakeholders, you know, like everybody, like five different people asking for five different things, right? So this is what a bad day looks like. Yeah. And, and, and lastly, you know, to add to that, you were trying to, you know, you were helping, you know, your growth stream trying to win a particular account. And then at the last minute, you know, they went with somebody else because it was cheaper. Okay. So that really stings, you know, when software is treated as a commodity, it really stings. <laughs> so that's, that's a bad day for me. Now, as an entry level or mid level PM, maybe, you know, nothing to do with, you know, account management, but yes, you know, the pressure, you know, coming from different kinds of customers for feature requests, especially for B2B. Or if you're in B2C, I think it would be around growth, right? You know, that how, how are the, why are the numbers not growing? Why is the usage flat, right? Things like that. So there is always, you know, pressure like that. Beautiful. Thank you, Kisley. Um, anyone else wanted to add anything before we close up? I'll just add the last note, which is they've covered all the good and the bad things. And the only thing I'd add is the best thing about product management is every day is different. And that's the exciting thing about the role is that it's always got something new and exciting and challenging that happens day to day.